Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel. This is Asim here. So in this eighth episode of Be the Agus series, so let me pause here. So before I talk about what we are going to talk here, let me ask you a question. So when you log into your email provider or any other web application, so after you have entered the credentials, like uh, you have entered into the web application, you entered the username and password, and you are into the web app. So if you do any other action now, so do you have to enter your password again and again or your username again and again? Probably not, right? So that's how the web applications work. They maintain a session. So session is the keyword here, and like we are going to talk about that itself here in this video. We will talk about how cookies help in maintaining session, how important they are, and how session hijacking could be done using the cookies like if you have a victim's cookie you could be that person by just importing their cookies using a chrome extension which i am going to show so chrome extension basically facilitates that thing cookies you need to get it maybe by any way you get it so we are also going to talk about a uh, attribute the http only attribute that is put on the cookies so as to avoid xss attacks then you could uh, easily gauge the importance of cookies by the hacker one report that I'm going to show in the um, by the second half of the video. So the cookie of the security analyst of uh, hacker one company was leaked, and due to that, the researcher could access security reports of other people, and for which he was paid a twenty thousand dollar bounty. And how hacker one is like changed the process to tackle these cases further moving on. So that's pretty much about the intro. Let's get started with the episode. So I've already logged into the website. Now let's check basic mission 10. So this time Sam used a more temporary and hidden approach to authenticate users, but he didn't think about whether or not those users knew their way around JavaScript. So let's explore the mission what Sam has to offer this time. Please enter password to gain access level 10. There is nothing more here. Let's check inspect element and see what we can find from there. So this is input type password, this is password. So there is nothing more here, right? You could check the source code and do the same thing. But let, let me do a control F here. So you, could, so you could see there are only four occurrences of password here. So, and he talks about JavaScript. And as I was saying that there is a session management thing here. So first let me show you what JavaScript is. So it's basically the like working part, the logic of the HTML web pages. So it's yeah, it's the programming language of HTML and the web. So HTML is what gives the layout to this. So these buttons, the green color, the arrow things and all the, this is in the larger font than this one. So these are all controlled by the HTML and CSS. whereas JavaScript controls like what happens when you click on this, uh, like what happens when you click on this, the date is being displayed. So this date is being changed whenever you click on this. So this date being calculated and being displayed here, it's due to the JavaScript thing. So let me show you this one. So there's uh, this thing, there's a date function. So if you want to like see JavaScript running, you either you could go to this website or you could just press Control shift i or just open the console thing here you could do a right click and inspect element as well then you could run any javascript here like the date command so see if even when i have not run this it's showing the output of this command so let me enter this so this is how it's being run so console is where you could also run the javascript so coming back to the mission so as i was telling about that we would be seeing the session management thing so JavaScript can also be used to access the document or the DOM model. Basically DOM is the thing that's being displayed here. So DOM, like, document object model, DOM HTML. So it's anything that's being displayed on the screen, It's it belongs to the DOM. So HTML DOM is basically, it's an object model for HTML and the elements, the objects, properties, methods, and all those things are HTML DOM. And JavaScript can control the HTML that's being rendered on the page using that. So HTML DOM is an API for JavaScript. We talked about API in the first mission, in the first episode, I guess. We talked briefly about it. So it's a DOM tree and all those things. So like if I show you the DOM tree here, 
so here it's the head then there's a body then we are other diff tags and then table and the body and all those things so as we saw in the other thing uh, where we saw the date command so when you were you play, when you were pressing the date button it was displaying the date on the screen right so that screen was being modified by the javascript using the html dom thing so not to delve too much into html dom since it's not very relevant for us today but into the specific parts of the javascript we would be talking about those things so even the cookies part are also being controlled by like javascript can uh, access those cookies so there is some conditions and we are come we would come to that after this so like if i show you document so document is the whole thing right so it's being highlighted because currently i am i have written document so it's highlighting like i had written the date command so it was showing the output of that right even even before i press the enter command it was showing the output similar thing is happening here even before i press the enter it's showing what element is being selected like if i show document dot location it shows the current location so the other parameters that you could access url there is the constructor active element active node all anchors a lot of things can be checked here so if you come down here you could see the cookie thing so like so you could see there are two cookies so first one is the level 10 authorized which is no and there is then the php session id so since this website is in php so there is a php session id so i was talking about session management right so this session id cookie this uh, this value so this php session id is what controls which user is being logged into the web app and if you have this session id you could basically log in as my account till my session does not expire so suppose uh, let me copy this uh, so i have copied this and then in the incognito one i have this fatemo 8612 user so it's another random account that i have so if i go on here uh, let me change it i think i have i have the edit this cookie thing um, edit this cookie oh i think i don't have so let me install that one i did this cookie so once i installed this it's very easy to modify cookies i could i could also modify it from here but it could be some like it could be error prone so i like prefer avoiding doing that instead i try to use this extension it's been very helpful and it's quite easy to use so i prefer using this like if you click on this you could see the different cookies there you could also see the type of attributes that being uh, placed on these cookies then the expiration time the domain and all those things so the, these are things that need to be like, in on a cookie so these are some of the attributes and the time and the path and the domain so let's enable it for the incognito thing so that i could use it in the incognito one so allow in private so right now i'm talking about hijacking sessions if you have the cookie like if you had this session id cookie of mine and then you go into the other website and you change it right like you change it to this so right now you could see this is fatemo 8612 but if i refresh my account you would see hacking simplified here see so it's no magic it's basically session id and all those things so these are the ranks and all stuff so you get right you get this right so this is how it's being done so now coming to the mission so you could easily guess that level 10 authorizes what needs maybe needs to be changed because it's showing as a no so let's change it to yes so it's quite simple it's being shown as a so now refresh this we could close this one i think i just uh, did i change this yes so let's submit this so congratulations right so it it was a easy one so but what happens is in not all the applications you would see it as is like there won't be yes and no values the values could be slightly different it could be encrypted it could be base64 encoded but cookies are extremely important so that's that so i also i would also be talking about this thing so like let me show you one thing so what if i do document dot domain sorry sorry document dot cookie so you could see all these cookies right but if there is a http only flag enabled on this then javascript won't be able to access this see javascript is not able to access this so it's basically done because uh, 
so it's done because uh, there had been incidents where people could execute javascript like in cross site scripting attacks and then they could steal those cookies so if you go to this blog by oasp you would see that this had been enabled for the first time or implemented by the, for the first time in microsoft internet explorer in ie6 service pack 1 so it's an additional flag in a set cookie HTTP response header. So set cookie response header is what comes from the server and that's being set on the client side like where I showed you. So using this edit this cookie, you could modify cookies, you could add your own cookies as well. So that's that. So using the HTTP only flag when generating cookie helps mitigate the risk of client side script accessing the protected cookie. So as I showed you that when I uh, disabled or when I enabled the HTTP only flag, the cookies that I could access was only the other cookie. So if I just disable it and again try to access that, so I would be able to access both the cookies. So now let's move on to the report. So this is the report where uh, this researcher could take over an account using a leaked session cookie. For this he was awarded at $20,000. So surmising the report, what happened was uh, hacker one security analyst session cookie was posted on a hacker one report and this report might be able this researcher might be able to access that report so he saw that cookie and he used something he inserted that cookie in his own account and he could access the reports using that so hacker one received a report which that the session cookie could be used to access sensitive information had began tracking so the tracking was done so 12:48 it was reported and like in 20 minutes it was reported to hacker and team also so in 20 minutes it was done so session cookie was revoked in like in another in another next couple of hours it was revoked so the root cause was because uh, when the security analyst was trying to reproduce a submission on the program replied to a hacker and accidentally included their own valid session cookie. So using that cookie, uh, anyone could access the security analyst account. As I showed you in the hack this site also, that uh, Femito user and I could access the hacking simplified account of hack this site and I entered it into the incognito window and using that PHP session ID, I could basically impersonate as hacking simplified 42, right? So even if there is a two-factor authentication check or there is a location check on that, so that would be bypassed because those are on, all on the login part. So like when one Gmail account, suppose if your password is leaked and the attacker is trying to log in into somewhere else, then there would be a check on Gmail. There's a check, right? So the checks uh, does what is that if they identify the Gmail, uh, Gmail service identify that you are trying to log in from an unknown uh, place where you haven't logged in earlier in recent days or something. So, so if you haven't logged in to, from that place in some of the earlier days or recently, so they flag it as suspicious activity and then they avoid directly logging into the account and they pose a challenge in some form of thing like there could be security question or there could be a 2FA thing. Another thing like if you have a 2FA on your account so it's mandatory that there would be another like OTP thing or it could be a Google Authenticator or any other app that would be generating a code using that code and the password you would be able to log in. So but if we have verified all those things and Google has verified okay this user is this this and then they have issued a cookie based on that to maintain the session. But if I have stolen those cookies and imported in, in my browser, so I would be able to log in as you and bypass all those checks. So it's not a weakness on cookies part or Google part or any other part. It's how the mechanism works, how it's how the system works. So it's basically that in this. So, so what they did as a like as a mitigation thing, like they they made a IP whitelisting kind of thing like only from certain places you could be able to log in. So even if you have the cookie, you try to log in hacker one platform or try to verify whether you are from those particular IP locations or not. Like there are, it could be one of their offices IPs and some other kind of thing. It could be their VPN. So even if the employees are at home, they could log in through the hacker one VPN and then you, they could access the platform. But since the attacker or the other researchers won't be able to uh, won't be having the hacker one VPN or won't be having one of their IPs or won't be into their locations, so they won't be able to use those cookies even if they have those. So that's that. So here he mentions how he got that cookie and then 
you could see other reports and you could edit private program and, and uh, all those things that a security analyst at hacker one itself could do so that's pretty much all so before i conclude i would like to talk that we have a subreddit hacking simplified so you could see we have, we have 30 people around so make it a strong community join that post links post your bug bounty tips and tricks post articles and whatever so let's come join together yeah have a nice day thank you